Hi Libra, Rosemary at Rosemary Astrology and welcome to your September 2022 astrology and happy birthday to all you September born Libras. So the most important thing or probably one of the most important things to know in a general manner um, for this month is that all the planets are retrograde and actually the outer planets have been retrograde for um, since before September and will continue to be into uh, October, more or less. Obviously, they don't all go retrograde at the same time and direct at the same time. But suffice to say that this is something that lasts more than just, you know, a few weeks like the Mercury retrograde. And everyone except, of course, Mars and Gemini and Venus that is right now in Virgo, the sign preceding yours. Mercury is also going to have its little retrograde. Of course, the sun and the moon, two luminaries never go retrograde. So in a general way, there's a lot of deja vu feeling. You might be thinking, you know, or a conclusion, you know, something that's been dragging or, um, you know, just has been postponed. You'll finally like getting, a, get around to finish it or finishing it or conclude it. Or you might think, uh, am I in this situation again? Am I seeing this repeat pattern? Oh no, not this again. Here we go again type of thing. I've been personally getting a lot of that. Um, you know, nothing big, just strange little things like, you know, oh, finally, you know, I'll give you one example of finally getting a piece of furniture back. This is going to sound like trite and it's, it's not a big deal, but getting a piece of furniture back uh, that I had lent to a friend, and I stuck it in my basement and I thought, you know, there were other things also I had lent. They didn't seem to have come back, you know, somewhat annoyed. Um, anyway, not, not you know, the, the greatest, uh, you know, interaction going on there. Let me just leave it at that. And finally, finally got the piece of furniture out from the basement, unwrapped it, realized what I thought was missing was in one of the drawers. But it was just like a strange conclusion. Like finally, you know, I've, I've gotten that back. I've put this to rest. I can just move on. Um, you know, like I said, it sort of concluded the, the friendship as well, but anyway, won't, <laughs> won't get into that, but that's just like one small example of, of what can be going on, but Hey Libra, enough about me, right? <laughs> um, okay. So having said that the sun is in Virgo for most of the month, obviously until the 22nd, when it will be moving into your sign. So this is sort of like your new year's Eve, right? When the sun is in our 12th house is in the sign preceding ours. It's always the time to look back at the past year. So from birthday to birthday and, you know, see what went well, what didn't go well, what goals we'd like to set for the next year always important and I always repeat this Libra write it down there's something about writing things down that one forces us to be clear because we think in terms of ideas and concepts but choosing the actual words to write it down helps us get clear on what we want and it helps us prioritize too because what's the first thing you write down what's going to be most important right what's going to be at the top of your list for example so a good idea to write that down and, you know, write what you want to continue with, what worked well, and maybe, you know, what you want to leave behind as well. And when the sun moves into the first, uh, into your first house, into your sign at the end of the month, you'll be ready to start your year. So when the sun moves into your sign, obviously you're going to be feeling more um, revitalized, rejuvenated. Uh, the focus is going to be on you. The sun is going to be there, uh, you know, making you shine. This is about you, your personality, um, you know, your your vitality, how you feel. And you'll be ready to uh, pursue those, those goals you've set for yourself and to take on your new year. Now, going back here before that does happen, the sun in the 12th house also brings light to inner things. So, you know, the 12th house is a lot about intuition, the subconscious, um, inner work, things that are you in relation to you. So, you know, maybe it's a good time to do some meditation or simply reflection or journaling. Venus is going to be there in your 12th house with the sun pretty much all month. So from the 6th to the 29th, at which point at the very end of the month, Venus is going to move into your sign and Venus is your ruling planet and will be there along with the sun. But I'll get to that in one second. So, you know, I always say Venus in the 12th house brings us to, you know, self cares because Venus is, you know, about love, about beauty, also about money. But in the 12th house is probably pushing us to 
some self-care. Um, you know, if you do, if you do, and you should um, undertake 12th house pursuits, you know, things like I said, reflection, meditation, journaling, uh, you know, taking stock of the past year. Venus is going to bring you an energy that's, you know, very beneficial and, you know, very kind and will encourage you to, um, you know, to practice a lot of, a lot of self-care. So, you know, do use that energy to prepare yourself for your new year. And the 12th house also relates to secrets. So with Venus there, you know, we could be looking maybe, and this obviously won't apply to all of you, but maybe, you know, a secret romance, um, you know, maybe something you are thinking about or considering and not ready to share with others yet. Just don't forget though, the 12th house is above the horizon. So what you think you might be doing quietly and that, like I said, could be a romance with Venus there, but it could also relate to um, things you're thinking about in relation to yourself that you're not really ready to share with others, you know, plans you have for your next year. Um, Sometimes we think they're really hidden, but like I said, the 12th house being above the horizon, they could be obvious to others. And, um, you know, just, just keep that in mind, right? If there's really something you want to keep under wraps, make sure it stays under wraps. Mercury is in your sign right now, making you um, very communicative. If this is, you know, uh, this is a good time to share ideas. Um, you know, Mercury is also bringing you to think a lot about, um, you know, different options about things. Uh, you know, Mercury definitely activates us in terms of thought and ideas and communication. You're a sign that is very sociable. You Libras tend to have um, a lot of interest in others, sincere interest in others. And um, this is going to be a great time for you. Mercury is going to be encouraging you to socialize. Now, obviously, with Venus and the sun back here in your 12th house, you might be hanging back a little bit, but definitely at the end of the month, um, when, when the sun moves into your sign, you know, it's going to make you very, very uh, sociable, obviously, because that's the way you are, Libra, and with um, Venus joining up there too. But before I get into those dates, let's just go back to Mercury. Mercury is going to go retrograde on September 10th. So that really is at the beginning of the month at eight degrees in your sign and is going to move back into Virgo on September 24th. Yes, on September 24th is going to go direct again on the 3rd of October at 24 degrees, the same place it was on August 21st. So keep those dates in mind and is going to be back in your sign on October 10th. Now the sun will already have moved in there on the 22nd of September. So like on October 10th, we're going to be seeing something like this. And Venus will be in Virgo until the 29th and will also move here into your sign um, at the start of October. I'm getting ahead of myself, but this is going to be a very beneficial energy end of September, beginning of October, because you'll have Venus, the sun, and Mercury direct in your sign. So if you, it's, you're going to be in a phase, I'm getting ahead of here, of myself here, and I will talk about this in October, but going towards end of September, beginning of October, especially after Mercury has moved direct um, on the 3rd, if there's something you need to do, ask, this is a great time, you're communicative, your words are sweet, you're thinking uh, fast, you're on your toes, and the sun is putting you in a really favorable light. But this is September, it's not October, so let me <laughs> let me stop getting ahead of myself. I was giving you those dates for the Mercury retrograde because, um, as I said, when Mercury moves direct, he will be at 24 degrees of Virgo, the same place he was on August 21st. So if you think back to August 21st, you might be able to see a repeat pattern of something or something that requires closure. Mercury retrogrades are a great time for finishing up projects, for going back and doing more research into projects. Moving back into your 12th house, it can be research in terms of simply reflecting on, um, you know, something you did or a way you felt in relation to another person or a situation. 
And then, you know, seeing what Mercury's message is, because Mercury is a messenger, and then being able to conclude that and move ahead again. And as I said, on October 10th, Mercury will move back into your sign, but will be spending most of its retrograde here in your 12th house in the sign of Virgo. And we'll catch up on October twenty, uh, October 17th to where he was before. But just use that time to conclude things and look back on things and see how, you know, like I said, related to the 12th house, how you feel. Even do some inner work. Let, you know, let your intuition speak to you. And don't be afraid to explore what you really think or feel. Remember, the 12th house is just, you know, pretty much you with you, right? It's very interior. It's very secretive. Um, you know, this is something you don't have to share. It's just, you know, your thoughts and your reflections and it will bring you more clarity, but it's not something you necessarily have to share with people or tell them. You can, you know, you can have a new attitude or a new outlook or a new way of um, looking at a situation and it doesn't mean you have to let anybody know about it, if that makes sense. To me, that makes a lot of sense, but I'm a Scorpio rising, right? Everything's pretty secretive. When Mercury moves back on the 26th, 27th, he will be in Virgo at 26, 27 degrees of Virgo. And Venus will be moving forward and they will cross each other. So this is an especially fortuitous time for um, communications relating to something past or something that needs closure. Because Venus will make your communication much more diplomatic, much kinder, um, Mercury retrograde, this is relating to something that is past. We're not initiating anything new with Mercury retrograde on any level, but we are concluding things. So if you need to talk to someone about something or if you need to, you know, close something by communicating your position, your feelings, your intention, this is a good time to do so. Again, in the 12th house, this might be just you concluding something with yourself and, you know, getting clear with yourself and giving yourself clarity and being able to move forward from there. Not necessarily, again, I'm repeating myself, but something you have to share. But do use those that time, especially, like I said, the 26th, the 27th, to, uh, you know, to really... Um, Take a look at something that, you know, you feel is dragging and needs to be ended. Something things, sometimes, you know, a, a situation or, uh, you know, it can be just a situation or it could be in relation to others, you know, just drags and we're not sure how we feel. We're not sure what we're thinking. We're not even sure what attitude we, we should adopt, but that would be a good time to, you know, get clear on that. And then you can sort of put it away and move past that because there's nothing worse, right, than, than living in the past so to speak. So that is pretty much, you know, the big stuff that is going on. Um, Mars moved into Gemini in your ninth house, Gemini and air sign like you exceptionally, and this will be another video, but exceptionally Mars will be there for seven months. And this only happens every two years. Usually Mars is only six weeks in each sign. The ninth house is related to foreign travel, foreign cultures, um, foreign, you know, customs. Um, it is also travel in the mind. Um, it is higher education. It is publishing. So, you know, the, the sort of higher octave of the communication of the third house is taking it to the next level and it is publishing. Um, the ninth house also relates to organized religion, religions. So you are probably feeling Mars' energy pushing you to explore something in that area or uh, set a goal or go after something in that area. Now, Gemini is a very fast energy, a very um, dazzlingly fast energy, and Gemini is ruled by Mercury um, that is in your sign. So, you know, there's an energy here going on between air sign you, Libra, and air sign Gemini that is very beneficial. It's actually, you know, so beneficial you might miss it because it is, is a, it's a lot of, um, a trine is, is said to be an aspect of ease. So this is going to flow so easily and, you know, it's going to link into the other air sign here, Aquarius with Saturn, but we'll get to that in a second. 
so you know Gemini is going to give you a lot of options right being ruled by by Mercury there's going to be a lot of options there and you're going to have a lot of ideas probably and a lot of concepts the trick is to use Mars this energy to narrow it down to one and go after that Mars is very very focused very incisive Mars rules um, you know Mars is the god of war he can actually be aggressive in going after what he wants as much as Venus likes harmony and collaboration Mars really doesn't give a hoot what anybody else is thinking or doing it's like I'm going after this think you know Mars represents um, you know the the military right because Mars is the god of war anybody that ha, you know the, the, that idea of of uh, you know, combat, defending what is right, um, you know, going on a mission, you know, single-minded focus, get the job done. That's Mars's energy. So if you can condense all the things that Gemini is going to, to bring in and focus and use Mars's energy to get there, it will be extremely beneficial. Obviously being there for seven months, this is a really, really good energy to reach a goal, you know, in relation to, to that. And it will bounce off of you. The interesting thing is you have Mercury in your sign for a good part of the month, although um, retrograde, but when Mercury does move direct again on, remember, remember on October 10th, now we're back in October again, but you know, Mercury will be back in your sign and that is the ruling planet of Gemini. So there's a lot of um, idea of communication, thinking about um, ninth house subjects that I just spoke about and they're especially going to relate back to you. So there's something, I'm almost getting a feeling of, you know, growth or evolution or expanding horizons, um, you know, something you're really, really going to be focused on um, and thinking about with, with Mercury um, in your sign. So you're going to be thinking about how it relates to you a lot, but it's going to probably have to do with ninth house things and Gemini again bringing you lots of options and Mars's energy use Mars's energy to achieve whatever you want in that area and, um, and just on a side note you know also the trine here with Saturn in Aquarius in your fifth house Saturn brings a lot of delays um, Saturn is retrograde right now which is sort of a good thing his energy is diminished a bit but Saturn brings a lot of uh, delays, makes us do the work for what we want. And fifth house is everything to do with children, uh, creativity, um, gambling and speculation, even romance, um, you know, romantic relationships, sex. You could be, you've probably actually been experiencing delays in those areas. But, you know, again, this energy is moving here. You know, is there a tie in with something creative? Is there a tie in with uh, children is there a tie-in with a romance you know are you involved in a romance with somebody from another um, you know someone foreign or someone from another culture we think often of another country but it can just be simply that they are from a culture that is is completely different from yours and have there been perhaps delays in that area and now you know you want to to um, to move forward Mars this energy is definitely pushing you to move forward in that area Saturn retrograde can also be showing you a repeat pattern in that area, most definitely. And remember, with the planets in retrograde, Saturn is going to be sitting at 19 and 20, or rather 20 and 19 degrees of Aquarius all month. So there's a sort of like just really pressing on a point and, you know, you know, grinding down on something uh, related to probably a fifth house matter. And that is going to, you know, if you look, like I said, a, a trine is an aspect of ease. So it is very, you know, easy to see if you look. That will also uh, be something that is evident. And again, you know, how, um, you know, how perhaps that relates to ninth house matters. How are you going to, again, push forward through that? You know, this is another sub-cycle of Saturn's transit through your fifth house. And again, you know, something now with Mars there is going to bring a, a different energy and Mercury, not long in your sign, but, you know, somewhat in October, pushing you again to, you know, review, move past another step, move up to another level. There's a lot of a cyclical energy when we look at astrology. So definitely, you know, with the retrograde here, 
there's a repeat of some sort in this area and these are all playing off of each other so you know it's hard for me to give um, you know a ton of examples and hoping it applies to all of you but hopefully I've been clear enough and some of this will strike a chord with you and you'll say oh yeah that's that's what I'm feeling or that's what that's about or yes okay I've been thinking about that it is a good time to to use that energy and to move ahead or to to move forth I'm just going to move this guy up here place him better don't forget there's a full moon on the 10th of September in Pisces in your sixth house so um, you know full moons are always a time that seem to trigger us a little bit more so give yourself a few days on either side to um, you know just to sort of ignore whatever is bothering you do take note of what the full moon lights up it'll be in your sixth house in Pisces so anything related to job, um, you know, duties, obligations, even tedious work, um, you know, detailed work, the full moon will, will probably light something up in that area. Like I said, don't get triggered by it if you're in a bad job situation. Don't let that trigger you, but do use that time to see what is going on and, um, you know, perhaps bring changes afterwards or... Um, but without letting it be, you know, a super emotional event, because we tend to like just get super emotional on the full moon and it's really not a time. It's time to wait a few days afterwards until we can be a little more rational and, uh, you know, you know, cool down and then make decisions afterwards. And finally, Libra, this is somewhat long term, but Jupiter, Jupiter is retrograde in Aries, but Jupiter is going to be in Aries for most of 2023. Um, in October with the retrograde, Jupiter is gonna move back into Pisces and then move forward again in December. So from October to December, Jupiter will be back into Pisces, probably feeling again that deja vu, something concluding, you know, probably in sixth house matters. But then in 2023, we'll be mostly in Aries in your seventh house, which is the house of committed partnerships. So remember, um, you know, just this is, you know, a little bit down the road, but Jupiter is going to bring solutions or opportunities or even expansion in terms of those areas. It can be a business partnership. So, you know, maybe you are going to form a business partnership with someone or often the seventh house is associated with marriage. So maybe, you know, there is a possibility of marriage or just taking a relationship to a more committed level in 2023 if you're looking for solutions or opportunities um, you know Jupiter is really going to smooth the path if things have been you know under discussion or you've been thinking about it but not sure you know Jupiter is certainly going to bring you opportunities and solutions in that area so Libra that is about it for September sorry if I <laughs> overflowed into October a bit but I just want you to know what to expect and see how it all fits together but you know do remember take the time to do the inner work and prepare yourself for new, your new year and at the end of the month when the sun moves into your sign and it is a birthday for you September born Libras do use that energy to begin putting things into practice and um, you know that that beneficial uh, energy and warmth and light of the sun that's going to put you into a wonderful light and in October when um, Mercury moves forward again and Venus is in your sign Venus at home in your sign that is going to be wonderful wonderful energy for you so September and October are looking pretty good um, you know very pleasant very uh collaborative very very sweet you're going to be you know out being your sociable self and people are really really going to like you and appreciate you not that you're not always likable and appreciable is that a word appreciable but you know definitely with the sun and venus you're you're going to be in a particularly favorable light so do make the most of it ask for what you want and do expect some, like I said, conclusions, reviews, feelings of deja vu with all these planets over here in retrograde. As I said, just Mars and Venus moving forward right now. So there's kind of a, you know, not that again sometimes feeling or isn't it funny, you know, this goes back several months and now it's finally getting uh, tidied up. So I wish you a wonderful month of September, Libra. And I will see you in October. Take care. Love you. Bye.